Jean Shafroff, and I'm on a mission. Anyone can be a philanthropist. My television show came from my book, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give. Won't you join me? Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, a fascinating man, a self-made billionaire, John Katsimatidis. John started from literally nothing. He then developed a global empire. He's a hardworking businessman, philanthropist, an all-round wonderful person. John, welcome to Successful Philanthropy. And John, can we start off by your beginnings? I understand you were born in Greece and then your family moved to the United States when you were just a baby and to Harlem. Well, we, uh, uh, my, my father, uh, my grandfather came to America in 1913, but unfortunately, and his name was John Katsimatidis, but unfortunately, he died in the pandemic of 1918. Uh, he left uh, my father uh, in the old country to take care of his three sisters, take care of his mom. And for 17 years, he worked on this uh, lighthouse all by himself for 17 years to make a few uh, lira because the Italians owned that entire area. We're from the Dodecanese Islands, the 12 islands along the Turkish coast was part of Italy. And uh, uh, he worked for the lighthouse, he, got, he worked for the Italian government, uh, and he worked 17 years by himself on this, on this one uh, island. Uh, after World War II, uh, the British took over the islands, gave it back to Greece, and uh, he went back to his native island of Misidos, which is the volcanic island along the Turkish coast. Uh, next to the big island of Kos, and he married my mom. Uh, and uh, my mom was a very e educated person, originally from Constantinople, but they escaped the Ottoman Empire and moved down to those islands. He married my mom, had me, and they went to Greek. They went to uh, America uh, when I was six months old, and uh, only in America, land of opportunity. Uh, my, my grandfather who came in 1913 looking for the street paved with gold. Well, it took me a hundred years, but I finally found it. Amazing story. And I understand you started your business while you were in college. That is the business of grocery stores. Can you tell us that amazing story of how at 19 you opened up your first grocery store? I was working part-time for this friend of mine named Tony, uh, and it, I was our only child, so he became like my big brother. Uh, and uh, I, I, I bought a car, I was going to NYU uh, Bronx campus when there was a Bronx campus. And uh, I didn't, I'm, I'm not gonna go to my father and my mother and ask him for, I need $10 to put gasoline in the car. Uh, so I worked on weekends, I worked on summers, uh, and uh, uh, just to pay for my car, actually. And then one day, when I was a junior, he comes to me and says, the other store we have, I'm arguing with my uncle every day. One day I'm arguing about this, the other day I'm arguing about this. You gotta take over the store. You're gonna pay me $10,000, but don't worry, nothing down. You're gonna pay me $1,000 a month for 10 months. I said, uh, uh, uh. I said, but Tony, he said, no, you got to do it. And, I, and he was my big brother, and I, I, I never said no to him. So uh, uh, I took over the store. Uh, I, I signed 10 notes, and I didn't even know if I could make $1,000 a month to pay him. But I made the store successful. Good old American know-how. So not only we were making, you know why partners argue, uh, Gene? Partners argue because they weren't making any money. But once partners make money, they love each other. And uh, I, I started making money in the store. So his uncle Nick loved me and we both made money. And uh, so life went on. But And, my, my and from one stuff. store, you went on to more stores. And by the age of say 28, how many stores did you own? 
Well, by the age of 24, I had uh, uh, about 10 stores. Um, Amazing. Making a million dollars a year. And that's a lot of money in those days. It's a lot of money today for most people. And John, so you're really known as the Gristides man, the owner of Gristides, but you also have a lot of other businesses, all which make you a billionaire financier and self-made man. Can you talk a little bit about those other businesses? Most of all, well, viewers business, don't know anything about them. Our main business is the energy business. Uh, we bought an oil refinery uh, in 1984, 85, 86, 35 years ago. Uh, and we bought it in bankruptcy, saved 5,000 jobs because you know how they go in bankruptcy. Larry the liquidator was in charge. He was going to liquidate the company and 5,000 people is going to lose their jobs. Well, I saved that company. I paid the creditors 100 cents on the dollar. So the creditors were happy. I was happy. And uh, that, that company uh, was a large part of our success. And so now what do you attribute your success to? Most people say, well, I had a great mentor, I had a great education, or just hard work. And obviously you have a lot of intelligence because no one can create an empire like you have created without intelligence. But what do you attribute your success to? I had uh, a lot of, I had about 10 mentors. Uh, eight of the 10 were Jewish. Uh, and I learned a lot of things from those people. Uh, one of them was Sam Stein, uh, who owned a grocery company uh, that uh, I was buying our groceries from, our supplier. Anytime I needed to build another store, he would call the controller of the company and said, John wants to open up another store. Give him more credit. Give him more credit. So I was not borrowing money from banks. I was borrowing money from our suppliers. Um, and I learned a lot from those people. And uh, I would say the key to success is hard work, uh, being understanding with people, and having the right mentors uh, on going forward. And I try to mentor people myself now uh, about how to succeed in life and how uh, to go uh, forward. And, you know, we're involved, as you know, with the police athletic league, and we do 30, 40,000 uh, kids a year. We can't help everybody, but if we can help a handful or, or 100, 200, 300, 500, and give them the ability to look uh, and work hard and keep their nose clean, uh, and we save some of those kids from Harlem or Bedford-Stuyvesant, I think that's very important. And I get personal satisfaction because I was raised in Harlem. I made it. And what I say to those kids, I made it. I was raised on 135th Street. You can make it too. And that's, and we give them confidence that they have the ability to make it. And only in America, nowhere else. I agree completely. And I think that you're really trying to help uh, Police Athletic League and to help the children. For those people that don't know much about the Police Athletic League, I'd like you to talk a little bit about exactly what they do. But you have actually been a big force in that group and meaning that you have been a great contributor and also uh, you, I guess, a great leader. So I'd like you to talk a little bit more about the PAL and your particular involvement. I got involved 35 years ago. No, yeah, 1984. Uh, I had one of my mentors took me to have breakfast with Bob Morkenthorpe, the legendary Bob Morkenthorpe. And I had breakfast with uh, Bob, and uh, he was actually interviewing me if I'm going to go on the board or not. And he was with Stevie Kaufman, another legendary uh, uh, lawyer in our community. And uh, we, uh, he chose me to join the, uh, join the board. And I've been involved for 36 years. And uh, helping kids, I was from Harlem. I wanted to help those kids too. It's really wonderful and so needed. And now getting back to your other parts of your life, I understand you're very involved with the Greek church. Your, your roots are Greek and you've been very involved with their philanthropy as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, 
I'm the, uh, right now the Archbishop, the new Archbishop that came, Archbishop of Peter Flodos, uh, assigned me uh, as Vice Chairman of the uh, uh, Board of Directors. Uh, and uh, what does that mean? I'm the highest lay, lay person uh, in uh, uh, the United States and America uh, for the Greek Orthodox Church, helping run the entire business portion of the church. My godfather and my children, Father Alex Kalutsas of Southampton, uh, is the vicar general uh, of the church. Uh, and that's just about the highest position, both, for, both of us reporting to the archbishop uh, and his largest position in religion uh, for his uh, uh, being a priest. Um, and we, our accomplishments, well, uh, they had failed in build, rebuilding St. Uh, Nicholas Church in, in the World Trade Center. When the new Archbishop came in and the new committee, I took over, Father Alex took over, Michael Cyrus took over, uh, Dennis Meal took over, uh, to help. Uh, the confidence that people had in the new team, we raised $45 million in 45 days from January 1 to February 15th of 2020. And we are rebuilding the church in the World Trade Center. It's gonna be an ecumenical church for Jews, for, for Catholics, for Episcopalians, for Orthodox, for everybody. It's about a place to go and pray by the World Trade Center. And that's where the original St. Nicholas Church had gone down during 9-11. And our goal, which we will do, is to reopen the church uh, on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 uh, of on 9-11-21. So we're working very hard uh, and uh, that's our big goal for New York City. And it's gonna be for everybody. You know, there's 10 million visitors that uh, go to uh, the World Trade Center, the monuments there. Well, we hope to get a million visitors to the church. This is a great thing that you're working on. And I love that the church that you're building is for everyone from all religious backgrounds. John, you've dabbled in politics. I remember you ran for mayor or you were involved in running for mayor in 2013. What was that like? And, and many people want you to run again. And they feel that you're a businessman, you understand business, and you understand government. And do you think you'll run again? Well, we'll, we'll see. But I started in politics. Would you believe I started in politics in 1984? Uh, me and Scott Stringer ran the campaign for Jerry Nadler for borough president. And okay. my God, that's for 36 years ago. And uh, a few years later, Jerry, Mayor Dinkins, who ran against and won against Jerry Nadler, said to me, why, John, I'm your friend. Why did you run Jerry's campaign? I said, he asked me and I had nothing to do. And, and that's what people do in politics sometimes. Uh, I then uh, uh, worked on Michael Dukakis' campaign because I was asked by the Greek Orthodox Church to do it because of their respect because he, he was Greek. Uh, and uh, I, then I became very good friends with uh, uh, President Bill Clinton. And uh, we, uh, it was fantastic years during the years I knew Bill Clinton from 1990 all the way to 2000. And, uh, uh, and a funny thing happened on the way to politics. My daughter married a Republican. He married uh, Christopher Nixon Cox, who was President Nixon's grandson. So I remember, I, I was at the wedding. <laughs> yes, and you know, he's a wonderful kid. And for some reason, they didn't get along 100%. They still love each other. I believe, I believe they still love each other because they're always hanging around together, always. Uh, and uh, uh, my daughter went on, she started as a Bill Clinton Democrat and now she's a Republican. So what am I gonna do? I, you know, I'm a moderate, I'm a guy in the middle. If you remember when I ran for for mayor, I ran as a Republican liberal. Why? Because I believe in helping the people of the inner city. That makes me liberal. I'm a Republican. Why? Because I, I believe in checks and balances. So it's a combination, a common sense person. I ran in 2013 
Uh, I lost against Joe Loder, but not really against Joe Loder because Rudy Giuliani was was pushing Joe Loder, and I lost against Rudy. And uh, I had the choice of staying in the race as because um, I had the Liberal Party nomination too. If I would have stayed in the race, who knows what would have happened? Am I going to run again? Who knows? Well, it would be very interesting to see you running. And I think a lot of people would like that. So you can announce it today if you'd like, or we'll just, we'll wait and we'll sit back and we'll wait. And hopefully we'll hear from you sooner than later. It's I may go on a listening campaign and try to listen and see if there's really a demand for another businessman to be a politician. Okay, well, thank you. And now you've also been involved with healthcare. I know Stony Brook Southampton Hospital honored you and your family, your wife, Margo, and your son, John, and then your daughter, uh, AJ, a, a few years back. And, and that was because of your philanthropy. And what do you think about this pandemic right now and healthcare? And I look at it as a top priority for all of us to fight this pandemic and and supply the vaccine to as many people as can take well, it and want Donald it. And, Trump, and you know, what are you doing to help the pandemic and and what are you recommending to others? I know I've our, been involved with many place, different things. Our stores, Gristini's and Dagostino stores were open all the time. We never closed. We, our people were on the front line, uh, making sure everybody in New York had food. Because could you imagine if the stores were closed, then people would panic. New York would be, well, it's a ghost town now. Hopefully it's gonna get better. Uh, but we got the COVID vaccine done. Uh, I understand uh, there's new, even more advanced vaccines coming. And there might be, uh, I would say Merck might be coming out with a pill where you take a pill, uh, like a Theraflu type pill. But um, I, I think our object right now, New York City has to make a comeback. We can't allow the greatest city in the world to falter. And two problems we have, we had the COVID vaccine, which we're gonna lick, and uh, we have crime in the streets. I believe some of the New York politicians made a mistake. It's time for them to correct their mistake and make sure our streets are safe. And uh, that would be my object. If I, if I ever became mayor, what my object would be, I would have the streets safe within 60 days. Yes, well, I think everyone wants to see New York as a safe city and as a prosperous city and a COVID free place. And hopefully moving forward, that will all happen. Have you been involved in any food pantry efforts? Have you been donating food or supplies to frontline workers? Tell us a little bit about your involvement as a business. You know, we bought WABC radio and I bought it as a, uh, almost like a hobby. And I wanted, when I was growing up or you were growing up in New York, it was the number one iconic radio station in, in, the, in the country. And uh, I love music. It became talk radio, but I brought back Cousin Brucey. I brought Tony Orlando. I brought Joe Piscopo to do Sinatra on Sunday nights. And uh, maybe this is the beginning of the acquisition of many different media companies. Well, I think it's important that we get a message out to everybody. Uh, I am taken back because... Uh, when we were growing up, uh, Jean, uh, we, Walter Cronkite, Cronkite was believed by 92% of the American people. You know how many people believe the media today? 10%, 15%. Uh, and uh, my object and, and what I'm saying to our people at WABC, tell the truth. The people are, are tuning in to know what's going on in our city, our state, our country tell the truth, whatever it is. And uh, on weekends, I don't want to hear about COVID. I don't want to hear about uh, problems in the world. That's why on weekends, we made it music weekends. I like that. And I do think that during times like this, which are so difficult for m most human beings, 
it's very important to have entertainment available and for all of us to be positive. And with us today on Successful Philanthropy is John Katsimatidis. He is a self-made billionaire entrepreneur. He's involved in the media world. He's the owner of ABC Radio in New York State. He's also a philanthropist and someone who may be running for mayor of New York City next time around. And John, getting back to your world in the media, I, you love it. And something I love too, I love hosting a TV show and I love having people like you on and hearing about your life. What advice do you give to young people right now who may be out of a job and someone who's really struggling? Because right now we have very high unemployment and hopefully it's going to improve. But if we end up having another lockdown, things won't get better right away. Of course, the vaccine, the rollout is helping. But what advice would you give to a young person just starting out? Uh, go into a business that you'd like to go into and beg to be at least an intern. Because if you're an intern and you, and you, are, and you work hard and you're good, you're going to make it through the ranks in no time. Uh, it's happened with some of our interns that started as stock boys and now they're running companies. Uh, and uh, uh, work hard, learn as much as you can, volunteer, and uh, you'll, uh, you'll be a winner. That's what America is about. The people that work hard to succeed, in, in, especially in New York. Every opportunity is open to you. Yes, and getting back to the Police Athletic League, for all of our viewers, we are with John Katsimatidis, and John is very involved with the Police Athletic League, with the United States Greek Church, and a number of other causes. He's not only someone who's made a lot of money, but he believes in giving back. He believes in the spirit of philanthropy, and this show, Successful Philanthropy, is to highlight leaders who believe in philanthropy and do something about it. And John, at the end of the day, what would you like to be remembered most for? Um, I'm, I'm, I, I want to teach both my kids about life, about working hard, about uh, philanthropy, uh, about uh, getting to know people, getting involved. I don't want them to stay home and do nothing. There's a lot of people just stay home, do nothing. Go out. And I know you're the same way, Gene. You go, you like to go out almost every night. And, and, and especially when New York was open. And New York will be open again. Get involved. Find circles of friends. You're gonna, if you get involved with the Old Timers Foundation, you're gonna find a circle of friends there. The Parkinson's Foundation, another circle of friends. So I got involved in as many uh, organizations as I can, because I wanted to meet people and try to do good in whenever I can. Work hard, play hard, and take care of the people that are needy. And that's so important because you have am amassed an empire and you are a true family man. And I like that very much about you. But most important is your spirit of and your desire to give back to the community. And certainly uh, a mayor would require that as a, a characteristic for sure. And now, as we look forward, you mentioned New York is coming back. The Hamptons have been quiet. The show initially will air in the Hamptons, but the, the Hamptons seem to be doing well. Long Island, I think, will come back. The United States is going to come back. And as we move forward, John, again, one small piece of advice for our viewers. Have faith. Look, always look up. Be an optimist. There's no, there's no upside in being a pessimist. Be an optimist. And work hard to make, it, make things get better. Don't work hard to make things get worse. Well, I love your attitude because right now with so much going on with the pandemic and then uh, we've had a lot of um, racial 
injustice, political turmoil, positivity is key for all of us. And if we remain positive and we support one another and we try to help those in need, we will all move forward. And that's what we need right now. This concludes today's episode of Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, John Katsimatidis. I'm Jean Schafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week.